Okay, introductory neuroscience and neuroinstrumentation, source localization part 2. Okay. So, in this session we shall conclude the lecture on the inverse problem and e.g. source localization techniques. Okay. We were talking about models, so let us consider the head model. So, we need the MRI image of the subject okay, which has a different 3D coordinate system than the EG electrodes of the subject. So, we need to align the EG electrodes with the uh, subject's MRI in a common coordinate system to solve for these problems. So, if you look at the uh, picture on the right, the blue dots are the fiducial markers for MRI. Okay. So, you have the nasion that is on the nose, you have an inion, you cannot see this here but the back, then you have two points or the preauricular ridges for the ear. Okay. The red dots are all EEG electrodes. Okay. So, we have to uh, synchronize both these, you know, otherwise uh, you know um, we will not be able to get the right solution if the EEG electrodes are not uh, you know uh, synchronized with the MRI image. The, the physiology has to be synchronized with the anatomy. So, as I mentioned, uh, this procedure is done using fiducial markers, which are anatomical locations. Um, uh, this point over here is the nasion. A similar point at the back, there is a ridge, uh, it is called the inion, and then you have the two preauricular ridges. Uh, so, these are the anatomical uh, 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 landmarks for the MRI. The red dots are the EEG uh, electrodes and they are arise from the usually from the 1020 system. Okay. So, once we have this, now we can model the measured EEG as so, y is equal to LQ plus n where Q is the time course of the unknown dipole, R is the dipole location, L is a matrix capturing how the currents from the dipoles are trans transformed into EEG recorded at the scalp electrodes and n is the noise, the measurement noise from baseline recording. So, essentially we have to estimate q given l, y and n. Okay. <clears throat> so, what are the sources of error? So, all the assumptions of the inverse problem if they are off or uh, you know uh, you have not taken them into account you will have a huge error. Then we need the head model has to be accurate. So, usually uh, neuroscientists use a four layered model that is the brain, the skull, the cent uh, cerebrospinal fluid and the skin. This is a good starting point. Three layers can also work, but it is not uh, so good, while six layers is good, but it is computationally very intensive. Uh, the computer will keep modeling it for days. The other thing is we have to recognize the different tissues in MRI. I mean, which is the skull exactly, which is the skull which is the bone, which is the skin, how thick is the CSF layer, so on and so forth. And this is non-trivial. You need to be an expert and it also takes a long time. Okay. So, source modeling software, uh, usually uh, nobody writes it from scratch uh, unless you are really a good in numerical analysis and coding. Uh, there are uh, open source academic software packages and there are commercial packages. So, some of the academic packages which uh, we have some experience with both the institute and at St. John's include EEG lab, it is from the University of California uh, at San Diego and uh, this has withstood the test of time and uh, it is very, very uh, majorly supported uh, and uh, I advise any uh, newbie in this field to first check it out. There is also a, a newer software uh, which is available uh, which is uh, uh, you know uh, integrates both the MRI as well as the EEG data. So, one is Brainstorm uh, which we have begun playing with at St. John's. And then there is one called Car Tool and uh, then there is Field Trip uh, which is a set of packages which runs on MATLAB. So, does EEG lab, it runs on MATLAB. Then there is low resolution electromagnetic tomography which we will consider just in a minute. Okay. As far as commercial software packages are concerned, um, BESA is the most popular. It is a little expensive, but it is um, considered very, very good in its field. And also Curry, which is from Neuroscan, which has a source modeling module. Okay. Uh, I am not familiar uh, personally with the rest of the software, but you can check them out. Okay. So, where do you begin? Okay, because you have a whole bunch of data, you have the EEG data and typically you do not have one or two electrodes, it is minimum 64 electrodes or 128 or 250 uh, channels 
and then you have to superimpose this after doing all the modeling and stuff on fMRI data sets which are vast, very big to begin with. EG data sets are much smaller uh, than fMRI data because uh, uh, and then MRI data because uh, they are uh, they go into gigabytes. And then you need a computer to handle all this, lots of RAM, uh, a fast processor and lots of uh, hard drive space because it quickly fills up. Okay? So one uh, suggestion is to start with uh, Mikkel and Brunet's uh, 2019 paper, it is over here and uh, they uh, describe Cartool uh, which is open source software for source imaging. So this review is good because it describes in detail the different steps needed to estimate the distribution of underlying neuronal sources derived from EEG, all the dipoles. It also explains the logic underlying each step and the requirements needed to be fulfilled to perform them. And all these steps are implemented in a standalone software called Cartool. So I suggest if you are interested uh, in uh, source imaging and modeling to please check this out. And you do not have to actually collect data. Uh, there are uh, demo uh, data sets which come uh, with these programs and also you have uh, many groups all over the world who uh, have put up their uh, data, you know, real data which recorded from real subjects not simulated data on the internet which you are free to use and to analyze. The only uh, uh, condition being that you have to acknowledge them in, you know, in your papers, your presentation. So coming to Loretta, so Loretta is low resolution brain electromagnetic tomography and it calculates the current distribution throughout the brain volume, okay, not just on the surface but throughout the brain volume. So it has advantages, one is it provides basic localization solution with easy to follow procedures, it is much simpler uh, than a CART tool and it is also open source so you, uh, you can download it and uh, use it. And it can localize boundary and deep sources, unlike earlier, you know, uh, solutions. Um, because if you just look at EEG per se, it's just you know the, the two centimeters below the scalp, and uh, after that you can't really say anything unless you use MEG. In which case you get deep sources, but you don't get the superficial sources. So one way uh, to have the best of both worlds is to do uh, you know, uh, uh, simultaneous recordings or uh, recordings of both EEG and MEG in a given subject and integrate the data. Okay. Now that is difficult because you know uh, EEG while relatively freely available, uh, MEG is not and there are very few sites, I am not sure if there is any uh, place in India which does uh, MEG on a routine uh, basis. The disadvantage of Loretta is that its spatial resolution is low. And uh, that you know makes um, you know source realization localization difficult. Okay, so the original author of Loretta came up, Pascal Marquis, Professor Pascal Marquis, came up with a variation on Loretta uh, called S Loretta. So this is based on standardization of current dens density estimated for source localization. It claimed it is claimed that S Loretta estimates the current sources without any error. That is, it provides the exact solution with zero localization error. Again, the disadvantage, you know, is it has low resolution and it fails to localize multiple sources when they overlap, especially. Okay. So the, the the group, the Loretta group, came up with another variation called exact Loretta or E Loretta, which is a method which focuses on deep sources with reduced localization error. It is based on Loretta but uses different numerical and analytical procedures. So it is supposed to be reliable localizing method with no bias, localization bias. And again it provides zero error localization in case of non-ideal conditions that is in the presence of noise. Several studies have shown that E Loretta seems to provide better results than S Loretta but your mileage may vary. Okay. So implementation, so one of our students at IASC, uh, you know, she is now at IITD, so she is studying uh, the, multi the mu rhythm in spinal cord injury patients for developing BCI assistive devices. We shall consider the mu rhythm in greater detail in our BCI lectures, but essentially it is a uh, rhythm which comes in the alpha band and it is over the motor areas, central on both sides and 
when you move or when you think of moving, it gets disrupted. Okay. So um, these are the uh, electrodes where the mu rhythm is mostly prominent, you know, uh, over the motor areas, sensory motor areas. And this is a typical mu rhythm, you know, you see this regular thing and it occurs in the alpha band. Uh, so it could be easily uh, be missed as you know alpha waves, but it's in the wrong area for alpha waves. Alpha waves are typically prominent in the occiput, and when they occur, if they occur in all areas, they are most prominent in the occiput. The mu rhythm, on the other hand, is localized only to the central and the parietal areas. Now the interesting thing about the mu rhythm is, if you think of moving your hand, immediately the mu rhythm, which is there. It's kind of an idling rhythm, like your car being on neutral. Uh, it immediately gets disrupted, and it becomes beta. Now, even if you think of moving your hand, you don't actually have to move it. If you think of moving your hand, it gets disrupted. Okay, so that's the interesting thing about the mu rhythm, and it can be possibly used for rehabilitation and stroke patients. Uh, make them train them to keep thinking about this, and uh, you know the brain is plastic; it's, it's, it keeps changing. In fact, they say your brain is not the same today as it was yesterday. It changes all the time. So this could possibly help in stroke rehabilitation. Okay. So what did Mansi and a group find? They found that the premotor cortex, the primary motor cortex, and the postcentral gyrus and the posterior parietal cortex were activated compared to other areas. And these areas are considered the neurophysiological substrates for motor imagery. So consider her data. Uh, so A is moving the left hand. So on the, you know, the left hand is represented contralaterally on the opposite side. So you see a lot of action over here. B is moving the right hand. You see some action here, but you also see uh, action on the left motor cortex. C is moving the legs and uh, that, those are the leg areas. The hand areas are below, the leg areas are on top. And D is moving the tongue. Okay. So each of these specific movements activates specific areas in the motor cortex. And um, she didn't actually collect the data. She used movement imagery database uh, from this website. So please uh, knock yourselves out, download this, and you can do um, uh, eLoretta. Uh, you can either use the Loretta software per se, or you can use uh, a software called FieldTrip, which has uh, uh, Loretta implemented in it, which runs on MATLAB. Okay. So. Uh, the field trip implementation of VLORETA, field trip is a MATLAB toolbox for source modeling. It contains a set of separate high level functions and visualizations is via MATLAB. It does not have any uh, GUI uh, per se. And if you go to their website, please see references to the review papers and teaching material to get you started. And by far the best way to get hands on experience is to go through tutorials like everything else. And also it is preferable that you do not do it alone because you might make some mistakes and um, uh, you know it is better to get course corrected right in the beginning. So it is better to work with a group of people or other people who have done field trip in the past. Okay. But having said that it is free and uh, as long as you have MATLAB you can run it uh, and get some good data. Okay. okay. Now we have to consider uh, you know commercial software too and uh, BESA brain electrical source modeling software uh, is the one most commonly seen in um, cognitive neurophysiology labs, the proprietary software. And it was created by two German scientists, Michael Berg and Paul Scherk, Berg and Scherk, and performs brain electrical source analysis for estimating the parameters for these intracranial sources of ERPs. Okay. So it may not provide an exact solution and the errors may vary from very small to being on the order of 2 to 3 centimeters. So it may miss sources. But that is uh, part of the inverse problem and uh, it is not the uh, thing of the software. Uh, the inverse problem is such that you would never be able to be absolutely sure that this is the exact solution of uh, you know uh, what we record on the scalp. On the, on the scalp. So on the uh, uh, figure on the right you see the ERPs in the lower panel you know different ERPs and on the top you have the computed brain generators it is on top. Okay. But given all its disadvantage, it still provides BESA, a reasonable estimate of spatial and temporal characteristics of ERP generators. This is better than estimating ERP generators from surface topography alone. Okay. Uh, it has got good math. 
So uh, if you see the figure on the right, you see the BESA uh, brain generators and uh, there are different um, you know, uh, spheres over there and uh, they have little rods sticking out of them. So it's a vector. So it shows direction and it also shows amplitude. And uh, best of all, uh, you can uh, superimpose these data on fMRI data. Now, fMRI is different from structural, uh, uh, you know, MRI, where you actually look at the activation of areas in the brain and you estimate this by something called the bold signal, the blood oxygen level dependent signal. The assumption being that um, areas with, you know, which are active have more, uh, uh, use more energy and so the uh, uh, blood supply to them increases. So, using EEG and fMRI is probably the most powerful way, uh, EEG, fMRI and MEG is probably the most powerful way to figure out sources and uh, generators in the brain. So, this has just been a, a brief introduction to source uh, localization and modeling. This is basically neurobiophysics. There's a lot of physics and numerical analysis involved. So I strongly encourage you to read a lot with the references uh, given over here uh, and also available on the internet. And uh, the best way to uh, you know, uh, do things is to get started. And if you have MATLAB uh, you know, in your institute or in your lab, please uh, download and use EEG Lab, ERP Lab, Field Trip, and Car Tool, and you're on your way. All the very best. Thank you.